Hey, how's it going? And today I wanted to make a video about how to make clouds using the primitives that come in Lightwave. I am by no means an expert on making clouds and I know there's some other people out there that are much more talented than me, but partially out of frustration and partially because I'm bored and have some time today, I just wanted to put together this tutorial to kind of walk you through how you could get started with it. I welcome any constructive feedback or someone else to actually do a tutorial to show their way of doing it. What I see with volumetric primitives is that it seems like it does a better job than the previous ways of doing it. The render times aren't too bad. Let's just jump into it and see where it goes. I will preface this by saying that it, it's almost as much of an art as it is a science because you're messing with clouds and clouds are by definition nebulous. So it's it's kind of random, which in a way is good because you can say, oh, did you mean to make that cloud look crappy? And you can say, yeah, absolutely I did. So anyway, let's get started. So we're in, we don't have to go into modeler at all. We're in uh, layout. So we're just going to stay in layout. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to switch our perspective to camera view, and then we're going to switch to VPR. And we've got the default gradient that pops up. It's a little blurry for me. Let, let's adjust that. I'd like a little more contrast. So what we can do is if we come in here to the Nader color, we're just going to make that black. And then if we bump up the ground squeeze, you can see we can make it a lot more dark. And then on the top for the Zenith, uh, we're going to kind of do the same thing and make that uh, nice blue, nice deep blue. And then we're going to bump up the sky squeeze on that too. I, I realize it's just something like that. Okay. Just so that there's a little more, yeah, just something like that. Okay. And that's our, that'll be our backdrop. And to get started with this, of course, we're going to be using these volumetric primitives. Some of it does seem counterintuitive as you make your way through it, but you start by creating a null. We'll just call this cloud. You know what we'll, what we'll do because this is going to come up is let's go ahead and hit D and let's uh, switch this to double vertical view. On the left, we'll have our VPR and current camera view. And on the right, we'll have our, our view, perspective view for kind of manipulating everything that we're going to be doing. And you'll see what I mean about the art part of it here pretty quick. Okay, so now we've got our, we've got down here where you see we've got our cloud objects, uh, null selected. So we go into properties. Uh, we're just going to come over here to primitive type and we're going to go volumetric. Now you've got spheres, uh, you've got spheres and cones. And, you know, when I'm thinking about clouds and looking at it, I actually think cubes aren't a bad way to go. So if you think about clouds, they're kind of, you know, they're kind of almost in a way more cubic than spherical, but you can do spheres. I'm going to do cubes. So right just now looking at what that we got there, you think, oh my gosh, we got a long ways to go. <laughs> So let's just kind of walk through some of these uh, settings, not all of them, but radius, that is basically how big this thing is going to be. So by increasing that, we can make it bigger and we'll make it just a little bit bigger. Step size is almost like a quality setting. The higher this number, the, the less quality there is. So actually for clouds, I think we're okay by bumping that up a little bit. Now here is where I think you can get kind of confused when you look at all these other settings. The emission is the amount of light that's going to be emitted, the amount and the color of the light. And as you can see right now, it's black. And unless you're making rain clouds, you probably don't want that to be black. So let's just change that to uh, white. And you can see that helps quite a bit. The part that, that gets confusing, I think, is the scattering. And of course, this is a, this just intensifies that color there. This determines how much light is being scattered by the volume. And what's confusing about it is the, the color that is, is the complementary color. So if you, if you actually choose black, you're going to get white. So, and that's the light that's emitted. So we're talking about clouds. So you want to be white. So it's kind of weird that you're choosing the opposite color. And absorption is the, is the same thing. Absorption is how much of the the color, uh, the color of light is going to be absorbed by the volume. And again, it is too is a complementary. So I don't know for this, we could just set it at gray or something, but just be mindful of that, that, that the color that you're choosing is, uh, is the opposite. So that, that might be too much. Just looking at that right now. Uh, maybe we need to bring that down. So let me hold on one sec here. Let's, uh, let's bring that down. Cause that's, we might even just turn this off cause that might just be too much. So let's just hit zero on that. Okay. And see where that puts us. Okay. Cause that looks pretty crazy right now. All right. And then uh, if we go down, here's really where all the main controls happen. So in terms of actually making the clouds, it's really by texturing it. So if we're looking to make, if we're looking to make 
cloud, what we really want to do is use the uh, the non pyroclastic because that's actually will give it a cloud kind of look. And of course, it doesn't look anything like a cloud right now. Uh, we've got uh, some work still to do on this. And then when we're at this point, we need just to apply some turbulence or textures to this. So like right now, if I'm looking at this cube. One of the things I could do just to get started with messing around is if I go here to it almost like wireframe better. If I change this to, I'm with hitting my scroll wheel to stretch, I can pull this out and I can bring it down and start actually kind of shaping it, manipulating it. And then I can reposition it. Let's say I want it higher in the sky and I'll just bring it up there. And of course it still looks very much like a cube, uh, but I can rotate it and actually kind of turn it. And it, this is the art part, right? I mean, you're just manipulating the heck out of this. Just kind of positioning stuff around to see what you kind of can get. Okay, so now let's go into the edit nodes. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab a 3D texture here. A good one is, let's see, 3D texture. A good one is always, of course, turbulence. Good old turbulence, which is good in, in 3D, but not good in an airplane. So here we go. And what we'll do is we're going to connect the alpha to the texture. And right away, you see what happened. You see that? That turned it into a, a cloud right there. Although it's looking a little, a little maybe, maybe too blue or something like that. So once we, like I said, art, keep that in mind. Let's go back and change this uh, where this is absorption. So let's, let's change that to black. Let's increase it a little bit. And that should make it more white. Let's hit one on this, just bump it all the way up. And uh, let's see, I'm trying to make it a little bit wider is what I'm doing. You can play around with these colors. Where I really notice things get, get interesting here is just on scaling these. So if you come back over here, we're working here on the right side of our frame. If we scale these, let's see, go to position, moving it around here. Let me do rotation and see what we get here. There, you can sort of see the three dimensionality of it there. You see that? So we can position this in a little more interesting way to get the maximum effect. And of course, I'd be lying to you if I said that there was some science <laughs> I'm following. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it how I think a cloud would look, you know? I think we could all say we're kind of experts on, well, I think that's what a cloud looks like. And then, uh, and then there's really just no limit. I mean, it just stretch it, pull it, twist it, whatever you want to do to it, right? Whatever looks like a cloud, right? I mean, this part looks a little bright to me and I, I don't really like that. So I'm going to see if I can tone that's down a little bit. It's coming out on the blue side. What if we try switching this one to gray? That helps a little bit, doesn't it? Okay, so you can play around with the colors, more of a gray, but just know that it's probably picking the, you know, the complementary color to that. Okay, so once we got this part done, we've got our cloud. Like I said, you just gotta go in and play around with the various settings. If we come over here on and we click on cloud, make sure we have our cloud object selected. If we go onto items and we go to clone, you can go clone current item. And I don't want to get too carried away with this. So let's just say, let's just make two of them. Okay. And we go two, and now they piled on on each other, right? So actually that's one way you could actually, <laughs> if you wanted to intensify the whiteness of the cloud, you could just leave it like that. And that's actually not a bad looking cloud right there. That's not what I had in mind. So what we do is if we're over here on the right side, let's come down here and we'll pick cloud two. And let's just move this uh, over. Now, of course, these are all clones, right? So people are going to be like, hey, that looks just like the cloud you had on the other side. So what you can do is just, you know, turn it around, you know, do stuff to it to, to mix it up a little bit. And then uh, maybe we'll bump it up higher. I mean, like I said, there's no telling what you might want to do with it. And do you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to call it right there. <laughs> and I think that looks... Uh, Pretty good. Now, what I'd like to do just to, to make it a little more fun is um, we can do a little bit of a, a fly through through this thing. So to, so you can get the, the 3D effect. I like looking th through the top view a lot of times. Uh, so let's see, I'm on the left, right side here and there's my camera. Let's go into camera first and hit camera properties and we'll click on properties. And let me set this to 
high definition while I'm at it. Now I will tell you I haven't adjusted any of the sample settings and I gotta tell you I think it, it, it looks pretty clean. Like that's pretty amazing how, how clean that looks to me right now. So all we're gonna do here is we're just gonna do a simple four second fly through because I don't want to be talking all day and you don't want to probably listen to me all day. So here we go. So I'm just gonna move this in the camera toward the clouds like that and you almost can't see him and then I'm gonna turn my whoops I think let me let me hit control Z on that can I back up on this hold on okay let me just delete this keyframe because I didn't I got ahead of myself there a little bit so my camera's way over here now so let me bring it back okay so there's our clouds let me delete this keyframe hold on my mistake there I am oh, okay there we go Okay, uh, it's all good. Okay, so now there's my camera selected and I did put it to high definition, didn't I? Okay, great. Uh, let me close this. And now if I turn my scroll wheel, let me point this up at the clouds a little bit more like that, like right there. And now I'm turning my scroll wheel while I do this. And now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna move my playhead is what I gotta do here. And now I'll move my camera forward, all right? And like that, and I'll, let's say right about there. Now I'll turn my scroll wheel to adjust rotation and then I'll pivot up to look at them like that okay and I don't know I could even if I want to get fancy I guess I could bank it a little bit let's bank it just a touch and then we're it's hard to see back in VPR like this but right so you get the you get the idea right so I could make this of course a longer clip if I wanted to uh, set it to 240 but you get the idea and actually these clouds look pretty good to me so I'm not even going to I'm not even going to adjust any of the the render settings. So all I sample settings. So all I have to do now is if I just go into up here render, I'll just go render scene here and it'll it'll render out the whole thing. I'll show you what you ended up with. So this is just a quick and dirty starting kind of introduction to how you get started with making clouds. It's really a lot of just playing around and experimentation. But so far from what I've seen, you can really get some nice results with these volumetric primitives. That's going to be it for me. I hope you found this helpful and I hope to be doing a follow up to this in just a couple weeks. Thank you very much and I'll talk to you later.